Hickok 45. You know, we've had a lot of requests to do the R1 1911 from Remington, but we're just not going to do one. Actually, we are. Happen to have one right here. Pretty cool. Poor little pot. Didn't smoke him too much. <laughs> Pretty cool. Feels like a 1911. Yes, it's all 1911, except it has Remington on the slide. Interesting. Haven't seen those until recent years very much, right? Let's go up here to the shooting table and uh, take a look at this thing. This is the enhanced version. Uh, there's the R1. I think there's a Commander. There's a may even be another shorter model. I'm not sure. And then you have the enhanced model. And uh, that's meant, I thought maybe that minute uh, was going to be a long slide, but I guess it doesn't. But this one is enhanced. I, uh, as I mentioned in Shooting the Breeze uh, 2, I yeah, wasn't sure which one to request because a lot of people like a standard kind of a military model, no frills, and other people like one kind of at this level where it's got better sights and a nice beaver tail and all that and better trigger. Uh, so I don't know you know, <laughs> which you all would rather see. But I think a lot of people that don't have a 1911 yet and they want one to enjoy and shoot a lot, uh, these are nice packages because they are, they feel better, they're more comfortable. I'm talking any 1911 that has a nice beaver tail like that and good sights on it. It, it does make them a lot more fun. Now that said, it, you know, the old GI model is just fine and uh, they're fun to shoot and they, they just they'll smell like history. Hey, that's a good line, smell like history. But uh, anyway, this is the enhanced model and I have been shooting it some, I haven't had it very long, and it has not uh, missed a beat yet, and uh, it is uh, it feels good, it has a nice trigger. I see why they are doing pretty well. Now, I'm sure there's people who have had trouble with them, and we might today, but uh, it feels good. It, it's a good looking gun, and while I've got it cold, why don't I just uh, show you the insides of it here real quick before we shoot it a bunch. I've got several magazines here. And I did notice one difference symbol. I normally, when I break one, you may do it differently. I just do that. Of course, you know, they're totally unloaded. I cock it, put the safety on, and then I just uh, push down, push, and then I spin that around. I noticed with this one, it does come with a bushing, and I haven't used the one. Okay, there we go, and that'll loosen up a little bit. Uh, you got your checker, what was I saying? Anything important? Yeah, that uh, that's, it's neat that they came back with these. The enhanced version, I think it's just been about three years they've been making it. Uh, once they started making stainless, I think, or maybe they had the enhanced versions earlier. Seemed like I, I remember hearing about them pretty quickly. And uh, it's, it's pretty nice. And now they are making, I think, a commander uh, size firearm. And, and uh, I don't know if they're making an officer size or not, but pretty cool. You got checkering on the back, you even have it right there on your uh, your grip safety okay got a little bit of versus the r1 i've not had an r1 but this versus the the r1 non-enhanced version i think you get better sights adjustable your fiber optic uh you, i think the grips are a higher grade the vz grips your uh opening is relieved there a little bit a uh, better trigger uh beaver tail of course the uh, checkering possibly there on that so you, you got a few enhancements you know on this this model of course and again it does make it nicer to shoot you know before i forget um since i'm going to have to reload these mags anyway yeah i've got some random hollow points and let's try some of them i'm bad about uh about that i don't i mean this is a real hodgepodge there, there's a there's a black towel in that group and, and these are years old been in a barn forever so I don't know what kind of test this will be. <laughs> this is more of an ammo test than for the gun, but it is some hollow points I have. I had to get some on order from Federal. Oh, there's a big wide mouth. Let's try that one. We used to call those flying ashtrays. That, uh, who made those? I forgot. It was some Winchester, I think. CC. Uh, yeah, I can't read it. Ah, okay. Oh, well. You can get it in there. All right. So, I'm going to, now this is one of the Remington magazines, so we'll use it. Yeah, I'll go ahead and load this mag while I'm at it. We'll put some of those in it, put the rest of those in it. These other mags, I have some Ed Brown mags and Wilson Combats, and I, I sorted out my very best magazines, and 
put them somewhere and I just can't put my hands on them. And uh, we've been fighting the weather issues here, so I wouldn't uh, dig around too much more. So I've got some older mags. Uh, hopefully we won't have any trouble with those. Uh, we do have the two that came with the, the firearm. The, uh, where's the other one? I put in my pocket. Uh, the Remington. You find it here. Oh, yeah, I put the mag pouch of all places. So it's the, the first one. I remember where it is there. So that's the one that is the true test. So we got hollow points there and hollow points in this one. I put in my shirt pocket. So let's try those. See if they fire. See if they function. Well, why don't we just try them on the target? Paper target here. All right. You think hollow points will go through the paper? That one felt weak. Okay. I'm more surprised that that ammo actually works than I am that the gun fed them. Okay. Fed hollow points after it was a little dirty, so. You would generally be uh, carrying hollow points uh, if you're going to carry this gun, and it'd be a clean firearm, right? So it's nice to get them a little dirty before you do that. All right, now let's just shoot the thing some. It has that nice uh, fiber optic in the front sight. Uh, I, I've noticed one thing about fiber optics. I don't know if you all noticed this. I was shooting it the other day, and I was, let's see, I was shooting at the red plate, and I was going, what was it, low. I was, I was using the fiber optic as my front sight to key on more so than the top edge of the sight. That's one thing you have to keep in mind. You got a round fiber optic there, but you've got more sight above it actually. So sometimes, depending on the lighting, you're keying on that red on that dot exclusively. But yet, then other times you're maybe seeing the black part of the sight. So you kind of now combat distances. Let me lay it down a second and I'll wipe my glasses, but. At combat distances, obviously that doesn't, that's not even a factor. Or even out here, 15, 20 yards shooting, you know, it's not a factor. But for, for more precision uh, work and shooting, it's just something to, to remember. I realized the reason I was, one reason I was missing was I was keying on just the, the red dot or something there. All right, if that makes any sense? Probably doesn't. All right, let's go over there. Those pigs look like they need some attention. Yeah, what did I tell you? They have been neglected. Nice, try the gong. Feels good. There's a Remington magazine. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like the gong. I'm going to beat him up a little bit. <laughs> I like to beat on little Mr. Gong. Look at those torpedoes. Big old 230 grain slug. By the way, I did say this was from Bud's Gun Shop, didn't I? This is a T&E gun from Bud's, whom we appreciate immensely for their sponsorship. And uh, this is pretty cool. We'll be going back to Bud's. After it has murdered some two liters, like these right here, Uh-oh, I missed one of them. Oh, I missed him again. <laughs> you smart aleck. You smart aleck. Just for that, I'm going to shoot you three times. <laughs> Almost could have. It. <laughs> he was falling. Oh, somebody put a pot down there. Ah, got a piece of it. Who else? Oh, there we go. I tell you, it's a nice gun. Remington R1. So far, these magazines have worked. Not too bad. 
boom, right in the middle of the coffin. Out of ammo, I might cry. Oh, I have some more over here. Uh, what have I not told you about it? Uh, if you're a 1911 hater, you, you would not, well, actually, you probably would like this gun. My guess is most people who are 1911 haters and hate on them might not have fired one, might not have, might probably have held one. But uh, it, once you shoot one enough to, to feel halfway competent with it and confident, they're just great feeling guns. They just fit the hand like a glove. Uh, they're really pointable. They point so easily and they generally have nice triggers. This one has a pretty good trigger and uh, yeah, they're just easy to, to shoot reasonably well, okay? Uh, they just, they're just nice. That one, it feels like it's made well and it's smooth. So let's shoot a couple more mags here. Appreciate the ammo. Federal, 230 grains. So far, no mag issues. There's a pot. Let's smoke that one. Oh, we just put a hole in it. I wonder if the weather makes a difference on those. They've all been sitting in the rain for a while here this week. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the other cowboy. Neglected. <laughs> Big old soft shooting 45. Let's see if we can uh, get that trigger working on that burn barrel. It really needs a couple more holes in it. It's not getting enough ventilation. <laughs> you have time for me to do that once more? That was just too much fun. I've got to put seven or eight more in. Oh, that's not even uh, one of the Remington mags. There's a Remington mag. We'll use one of those. Yeah, uh, adjustable. I think your uh, over travels adjustable on the trigger there. It appears you got your front serrations. Uh, some people don't like those. Some love them. And uh, anything else? I uh, you have a, an extra wide kind of a paddle there on the thumb safety. It could be good. Could be bad. You might not like it. Uh, I know back in the day when I was competing a lot with these guns, I would I would I developed a habit of laying my thumb up on that. And just leaving it up there and that's how i how i shot but since i've kind of decided i don't like that as much i did notice with this i always like to test a, a 1911 with this and this is generally an issue with people who have large hands it's an issue for john uh some of these if you if you pull that out and you put your thumb on that safety and you got that nice paddle there you could just leave it lying there and let's say it was a shoot no shoot situation or something so you got your thumb on that paddle and you're going to leave it up there and you disengage it because the dinosaur is about to get you and oh, can't pull the trigger with my thumb up on the paddle i i can't i can't pull the trigger i've got to get down off there because i'm not engaging disengaging the the grip safety something you always want to check on a firearm uh many of them these days especially with the little bump here will allow me to do that if i want to but uh, on this one I need to have my hand down off that. You get a tighter grip that way, okay, like that. You see what happens, the physics of that. Okay, there's my normal grip, and not a problem, trigger or pull. But when I bring my thumb up to that, see, it takes some of the meat off of that safety. It does not disengage it, and I cannot fire the gun up there. It's, the safety is still on, okay? Bring it down here, boom. Just a little, little thing to point out there, and I will not charge you anything extra for that, okay? Today, next time I will. All right, I guess I fooled around almost enough. Let's uh, well, look at all the powder residue on my arm. <laughs> Let's put it in this uh, this uh, holster I just uh, dragged out from somewhere. Uh, okay, pretty cool, pretty cool. 1911 day. Why don't we end up by killing the coffin? <laughs> Yeah, 1911s are just fun to shoot. Don't have to carry them. They're just fun to shoot. They're great shooters generally. And if they're tuned correctly, they're, they're pretty darn reliable. You know, it's just you got to make sure extractors tight enough and everything's tuned right. And they'll generally function uh, like most other firearms. 
but the, you just got to make sure they're tweaked properly. So I don't know, uh, you know, this is just one gun and it's one human's experience, semi-human's experience, uh, but so far I, I like the Remington R1, at least the enhanced model here. The one I have works, it has not, uh, not had any problems with it, with, uh, I don't know, I, I probably shot it uh, 60 to 75, maybe almost 100 times before before the video. It's not extensive, but I had no trouble with it. It didn't seem to need a break-in period or anything, so you know, I'm not going to do a 500 round or a 1,000 round test on it or anything. Uh, we, we, you know, just I'll let you do that. You know, the firearm you buy, you need to do that. You know, you probably ought to shoot it three to four or five hundred times before you, if you're going to carry it or rely on it for self-defense. Uh, but I just had no issues with it, so didn't feel like that was necessary, and uh, none today. So that, so my impression of the of the Remington R1 at this point is is very positive because I'm not having negative uh, experiences with it. So just for what that's worth. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Remington R1 Enhanced. Uh, seems like a pretty nice 1911 to, to me so far. Life is good. We'd like to thank one of our sponsors, SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI has fully accredited distance learning programs where you can get certified in gunsmithing or even an associate's degree in firearms technology. Of course, the study includes hands-on experience, which is important, of course. So check it out, uh, go to sdi.edu or just click on the link in the description. Okay? And also we'd like to remind you to check out the Hickok 45 Facebook page and the Hickok 45 and Sun channel and its Facebook page as well as Gun Culture Radio on iTunes. Now remember all this because I'm coming to your house randomly over the next year or two to give you a quiz on it. Okay? Thank you.